It's time for another round of Hot GPT. And today's topic is three ways to figure out your next career move. So let's do that. Now, why this topic? Well, on my show last week, we had as the guest, the great Bruce Feiler, who wrote a book called The Search. It's going to be a, as I say, uh, an instant classic, an instant, just total classic on the show. It's going to be repeated in the future. I know it because Bruce is just that good. He's so practical. When he writes about something, he spends years studying it, interviews a gazillion people. Then he he does a ton of analysis. And he also, he just understands context so well. So he frames up the problem he's trying to solve and then gives us pathways to solve it. And what he is talking about in this book is how to build jobs in a post-job world, right? The post-job world we live in where careers are changing all the time. And that's such a topic, right? I think after, well, I mean, the pandemic, sure, after the pandemic, but then even before that, I mean, I've been doing sort of a post-career, post-job thing now since 2010 when I left Wall Street because my whole career blew up and it was terrible. I got on a heart monitor, as many of you know, and I was like, can't do this. And so I found my own way. And now so many more people are doing this. But it is not easy. Let me tell you, I was totally lost for more than a couple of years trying to figure out how to make this work, how to figure out what were the right things for me to do. It was painful. And so Bruce is giving us tips to avoid that. What I wanted to do to build on top of that. So as you guys know, I have launched a coaching company and one of my clients is using what I call my pivot package. What is the pivot package? It's a special focused series of sessions where we focus on figuring out what to do next in your career, right? Which is a whole, it's very different than the other kinds of coaching one does because it's, it's sort of like a project managing a process a bit more. And I want to share a couple of things that I think are really powerful. So, you know, you can just do your own pivot package. So that's what we're going to talk about today, right after this break. FOMO. FOMO. All right. As I mentioned, giving you three critical steps in the pivot package that I use at the X quotient. And then I write about in The 10% Entrepreneur. So this is stuff I've been thinking about and doing for more than a decade. I used it on myself. That's how I figured it out. Back in 2010, 11, 12, something in there when I was lost. And I've now used it with clients and it works. So let us go through the three things that you can do when you're trying to figure out what to do next in your career, particularly if you want to make a change right? If you say, I like making widgets, I just want to make widgets somewhere else. That's a pretty clear thing. You just figure out where to go. Who else makes widgets? But what if your industry has changed? Like in you're in the media, for example, and it's, you know, Gen AI is putting people out of work. What if you just hate what you do? You're like, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, then you got to reinvent yourself. And this is the, the exact challenge I want to explore tonight. So let's start. Number one, write your bio. Now, the important thing here is we forget, we forget many of the things we do. We all have resumes, right? Resumes are great. And I, I you know, you should do that too. But the bio is great because it has more nuanced depth. It is more connected. It is more thoughtful in terms of just laying out sort of the the progression and the why and and what you did. And so what I tell people to do is write a very long bio. I'm talking about pages. That's what I did myself when I was trying to figure out my life 10, 15 years ago. Start with education. Start with your first job, what you did there, the projects you work on, list all of the things you did. Just go through and then continue and continue and continue. There is no detail too small, right? You can always just make it shorter later, but try to get as many things out there in the bio as you can. Now, what does this do? Number one is it's good for 
jogging the memory about the things you have done because maybe you forgot some stuff and you can throw those into the resume. Number two, it is really wonderful in terms of reminding yourself, hey, I've done a lot of good stuff out here. Like, you know, I, even if you're feeling a little down on yourself, it's like, wow, I have a great experience. Wonderful. Maybe I need to be a little bit more positive on my prospects. And number three, as you think about this thing and as you sort of draw all of this out, it starts to give you ideas about what your skills are, your experience, what industries you know, what skills you have, what people you know, what you've done. Very nice to have that right there for you. So that's number one, write your professional bio. You can throw a personal too, but you know it's really about professional. Number two, do a little exercise I like to call Opportunity cost zero. And this is to say, say you went to the office tomorrow or wherever you work and they close the doors and it's gone forever and you cannot return to that company or that specific role. What would you do? And this is a really kind of a fun sandbox where you can think of anything. Maybe it's like, I'm a, you know, I'm a lawyer and I can't do law anymore because they got rid of that industry. What would you do? Do you want to be a bassist in a band? Do you want to be a model? Do you want to be a politician? You can put anything you want. Now, obviously, if you're Patrick McGinnis at five foot eight and you say you want to be a pro basketball player, it's probably not going to happen. So that isn't as useful. But maybe it does say, well, maybe I could get involved in starting a basketball academy. Maybe I should just play more basketball. Just try to generate things that get you excited, even if they're not hyper practical, because it'll start to get your juices flowing. Maybe, now obviously lawyers aren't going away, but maybe you should go become a lawyer at the NBA if you love basketball so much. So it's like you can, you can stay in the industry, but then you've uncovered this thing that you love, which is basketball. So even if you're not going to play on the court, you can use your skills to find a way into working in the sport, something like that. So that is really wonderful. List as many things as you can and just think about like, what? It, why does it excite you? Really, really powerful to do that. And then you cross-reference the bio and the opportunity cost zero. And you start to think of, well, here's what I like to do. Here's what I'm good at. And that allows you to start generating more ideas. So keep a list of those. And that is part three. Part three is synthesizing the two things together and trying to come up with a narrative around the things you love to do and the things you are good at. And that is a wonderful starting point to think about the future. It really is. And then there's a lot of stuff you can do with that, obviously. For example, one powerful thing you can do is look through that bio and think about the people you met in all of these jobs that you can go reconnect with and tell them you're trying to figure out your next steps. You've been thinking about these things that you surfaced in your bio and opportunity cost zero and might they have ideas for you. So those are some ideas to get you started on your own personal search. It can be very powerful and it's a really good opportunity to just dig inside and figure out who you want to be and what you want to do. If you have ideas, thoughts, reactions, you can reach out to me at Let's Connect at PatrickMcGinnis.com. You can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on X, formerly known as Twitter. I prefer Twitter. At PJ McGinnis. We'll be back on Thursday with Bruce Feiler and The Search. So until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO Sapiens. And Pat GPT, stop generating. FOMO. FOMO Sapiens is recorded in New York City. Theme music is by Mike McGinnis, and editing and post-production is by Josh Elstro. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me at FOMOSapiens.com and at PatrickMcGinnis.com. To advertise on FOMOSapiens, reach out to contact at FOMOSapiens.com.